always want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast. This broadcast is a live Bible question answer program where you, the audience, have an opportunity to pick up your phones, dial 281-837-2222 if you have any Bible questions, comments you'd like to make, and we'll give you book, chapter, verse for all of your Bible questions and love to listen to comments as well. Running through August the 4th, we're having our vacation Bible school at 7 p.m. nightly. It is for the young and the young at heart. We'll have uh, teachings available for those of all ages. Invite you all to come out. He did not speak of his own, but he only spoke the things that his father, in fact, wanted him to speak. And that should be no different from for you and I. We must get into our Bibles and rightly divide the Word of God and speak the things that God wants us to speak, rightly divided on the pages of inspiration. Go with me to 2 Timothy 2, very familiar passage of Scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and look with me in verse number 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and look with me at verse number 15. This is why Paul would tell young Timothy this information. This not, did not only apply to, to Timothy, it applies uh, to all of us. Uh, who have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we need to burn the midnight oil and be able to find our answer uh, rightly divided in the word of God. Paul tells him, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but here's the key, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now again, I say it again, why would he say rightly divide? Because there is a wrong way to divide it. Again, this is why we have so many different religious organizations in our world today. Some that say you can eat pork. Some say you can't eat pork. Some say you can have instruments. Some say you don't use instruments. Some say you should be paying tithes. Some say you're not paying tithes. Now again, if we're all serving one God, there's one Jesus, one Holy Spirit, the question has to come to your mind, why are we teaching different things? That's a problem. And the problem is we have many who are not speaking the oracles of God. They're not uttering their answer from God's word. They are listening to man's beliefs, man's thoughts, their parents' thoughts, or whatever, the television's thoughts. Uh, other than uttering what God would have them to speak, rightly divided from the pages of inspiration. Now, I want you to go back with me to Matthew chapter 4. See, now, the, the, the con behind uh, twisting what God has said is none other than the Satan, than Satan. You know, the devil, it's always been his mission to take God's word and to twist what God has said. Please get that in your spirit. That has always been Satan's modus operandi. His modus operandi has always been to try to take what God says, God's thoughts, and then twist them to get you and I to think differently about what God has uttered. In Matthew chapter 4, after Jesus got baptized, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And I want you to pick up with me, if you'd be so kind, in verse number 1. Then was Jesus led up in the Spirit in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. You know why he was hungry? Because he was God and man. He was 100% God and he was 100% man. That's why he was. He got hungry because he was 100% man. He was God in the flesh, the Son of God in the flesh. And when the tempter came, that's the devil, came to him, he said, If you be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And so he's now tempting Jesus, who is 100% God, 100% the Son of Man. He's tempting him with the lust with the lust of the flesh. That's what he's doing. The lust of the flesh. You're man and you get hungry. But notice Jesus answered. Jesus answered and said, it is written. Notice what Jesus goes back to. He goes back to the utterance of God. He goes back to God's thoughts. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I want you to pay attention to that. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That implies here a little, there a little. That's what that implies. See, because what Satan did in verse number 3, if you be the Son of God, command these stones to turn, be made bread, he's challenging Jesus' authority. That's what he's doing. He's challenging Jesus' Uh, in, in his knowledge and understanding of who he is. Jesus knows who he is. He doesn't have to prove anything to the devil. You have to understand that. And so Jesus lets him know it is written. He goes to the word, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Look at verse 5. The devil's not done. The devil take him up into the holy city, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, if 
you be the Son of God, cast yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest at any time you dash your foot against the stone. Now, is that a scripture in the Bible that says that? Yes, there is. Psalms 91, 11, and 12 says that. Satan is tempting Jesus, who is 100% God, 100% man, with the pride of life. That's what he's tempting him with. He's tempting Jesus to be prideful about who he is. That's what he's doing. He's using the scripture to do it, but he's twisting them to try to cause Jesus to do what he wants Jesus to do. To believe how he wants Jesus to believe. But Jesus, who knows how to rightly divide the word of God, who knows his father's thoughts, he says this. Jesus said unto him in verse 7, it is written again. You see, that's very important. You shall not tempt the Lord thy God. I hope you understand this is how you and I rightly divide the word of God. Jesus understand that the scriptures cannot be broken. Amen. See, even though Satan is using scriptures, Psalms 91, 11, and 12, had Jesus done that, jumped from this pinnacle, what he would have been doing, he's been testing God. And what Jesus knows, it's always wrong for mankind to try to put God to the test. You and I don't test God. God tests us. God will always pass a test because he is God. Jesus understands who he is. He understands he came to do the will of his father. So he tells Satan, it is written again. There's more on this subject, Satan, than what you just quoted from Psalms 91, verse 11 and 12. And this is what we've been trying to get our brother to see when it comes to Jesus being God in the flesh. To understand that he is the son of God. He is not his father. That he was here before the world came into existence, but he was not before his father who is his father. It just doesn't make sense. You all break scriptures when you hold on to that foolish doctrine. This is why we always stress to you all, don't go to the Bible with your preconceived idea. Let the Bible set your conscience. Amen. Let the Bible determine what you and I should believe in our thoughts about God. It is written again. That's what you have to understand. So when you read Genesis 1-1, and then you read John 17 and 5, you would have to know that Jesus was there before the world ever began. Amen. I mean, you just you have to break scriptures to hold on to foolish thoughts like that. See, you have to break scriptures when you teach that tithing is for today. You understand that? You're breaking the scriptures when those teach tithing is for today. When those when people teach that the law did not change. You're breaking scriptures. Hebrews 7, 11 teaches that it did change. And so you have to rightly divide the word of God. So the devil's not done. Look at verse 8, Matthew 4. Again, the devil take him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world. Here's the lust of the eyes and the glory of them. And he said unto him, all these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Now, let me say this about temptation before I toss this. Temptation, brothers and sisters, you know, this temptation that Satan gives Jesus will not be your temptation. Make sure you get that. The devil knows who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. It's why he's tempting him in this way. Amen. He knows he's the son of God. He knows that Jesus is able to turn stones into bread. That'll never be your temptation. Please understand that. Satan will never tempt you or I to turn some stones into bread because he knows you cannot do that. Amen. But to Jesus, who is the Son of God, everything Satan is doing to him to tempt him was very possible. To be a temptation, there needs to be an opportunity to be able to do what he's asking you to do. You have to understand that. An opportunity to, uh, to be able to do it with a desire. That's an opportunity. When you have a desire and an opportunity meets, that's a temptation. But if there is one of those missing, then it's not a temptation. If you don't have a desire, but you have the opportunity, then and you don't have the opportunity, then it's not a temptation. You have to understand that. He had an opportunity to, to do this. And Jesus did not do it because his desire was to do the will of his Father. So in verse number 10, Matthew 4, then said Jesus unto him, Get you hence, Satan. Notice what he goes through the scripture. For it is written. He's going to speak the oracles of God. It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, 
and him only shall you serve. Then the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Amen. You know, every way that, that Satan tempted Jesus here in Matthew 4 is, is every way you and I have fallen into sin. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And the only way that we are able to beat Satan is we must speak the oracles of God, but we must speak them rightly divided. Many quote scriptures. You have to understand that. Many people in our world today carry a Bible, quote scriptures, uh, uh, read the Bible, but that does not make them a Christian. Go with me to 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4. 1. Nothing new, brothers, sisters, and radio listeners. You have to understand this. We are in a spiritual battle. That's what we're in. It is Satan who wants to lie to you. It's Satan who will make you believe that you're religious and God is with you. But if you're breaking the scriptures, you have to understand something. God is not with you or I if we're teaching and living lies contrary to the doctrine of Christ. Amen. So look in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall, get this, shall depart from the faith. We are living in the latter times. This is what he's dealing with. We're in the latter. When Paul wrote, it was the latter times. It was the end. We're living in the last age, the Christian age. That's it. There is not going to be an age after this age, the Christian age. He says, now notice what they're going to be doing. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines, teachings of devils. You see that? So what he's letting us know is what the devil is going to do He's going to take some who are in the faith, like, like Orpheus Haywood, who now has women standing up and leading songs, uh, who's teaching tithing. You know, we have these men who have departed from the faith. When you look at the bottom of the comment section, for those of you who, who get all riled up when I bring up Orpheus Haywood's name, you just go look at the link at the bottom of last week's uh, video, Read Your Answer Part 1, and let Orpheus speak for himself about his departure from the faith. You just look at the video yourself. He will show you where he's lost at. You listen to a person long enough, they will let you know where they're lost at. Amen. Okay, please understand that. When you hear people talking about tithes and baptism is not a necessity for salvation, nothing wrong with women leading songs. They are telling you where they're lost at. Hey, I'm over here and I'm lost. And that's where Haywood is. He's teaching doctrines of devil. He's seducing people. Now look at verse 2. What is he doing? Speaking, not just him, many in the church are doing this, who will have the faith. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Here's some of our brother forbidding to marry. That's another one. We have brothers in the church of Christ who are telling people after you've been married, uh, you were divorced, and if your divorce was for a reason other than fornication, you cannot get married again. See, that's them for getting to marry. Again, Paul is not taught, ain't even think about no Catholic church. Catholic church ain't even in existence when the Holy Spirit writes this. You are, when Paul writes, this is the latter days, and you had brethren in Paul's day when he writes to Timothy telling people they can't get married anymore. That's not a new doctrine. Just like there are people today in the church writing this A.D. 70 foolish doctrine talking about Jesus came back in A.D. 70. You, you read that in the Bible that some had already said the resurrection already passed. So they don't rightly divide the word of God. They can't read that answer in the Bible. And when they try to read it in the Bible, what it does is it breaks other scriptures. Amen. It breaks other scriptures. So they forbid to marry, command to abstain from each, which God had created to be receiving thanksgiving of them which believe, get this, and know the truth. Brothers and sisters, this is why this program is called the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast. None of us on this program have ever said we were Jesus. Amen. We never professed to be Jesus. We always leave the lines open for Orpheus and anybody else who wants to call in with some sense. I'm going to make sure I qualify with some sense. And call in with some honest questions about God's word, about what we teach. And we give you time to speak and to show us where we could be off. And if we're off and teaching false doctrine, we will repent. And we will change. We'll go back to our various congregations and we will repent and we'll acknowledge that we've been teaching false doctrine. We have broken the scripture, but thank God you let us see, God, our error before we left here. That needs to be our spirit and that needs to be your spirit as well. Brothers and sisters, many of you know that you have been teaching wrong on this era of talking about Jesus is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to tell you, you had enough time to fix that. You need to get that right before you die in your sin. 
Read your answer. And when you read your answer, make sure it's from the Word of God and no scripture is broken. 281-837-2222. Brother Amen. Stephen Hosea. Thank you, Henry. God bless Amen. you. Job well done. God bless you, and Brother Chris. Thank, Thank you for your position of faith. Now, I want to look at sticking with the term and theme of read your answer. Look at Matthew 12. Here comes a, a very bold challenge against Christ. Because his disciples are trying to get something to eat on the Sabbath. And so Jesus understands the violation being done. Some of you in the church are trying to say they didn't violate. Try to go twist Deuteronomy and Leviticus. Because they did violate. And we're going, we're going to show this. Matthew 12, 1. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn. And the disciples were in hunger. And began to pluck ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it. Look how they're watching Jesus on the Sabbath. My brother Free is talking about this man they're watching him they said unto him behold thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day you ever wonder why they didn't just go ask the disciple why you're doing it but he says have you not read look at that have you not read what David did when he was in hunger and they that were with him I entered into the house of God and did eat the shoe bread which was not lawful see compassion shun what they're doing is not lawful also for him to eat neither for them which were with him, but only for the priest. So he read his answer. I believe we have a caller uh, right now. We're going to take that call. Hello, caller. Can you hear us? Sir, can you please explain to me Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16. Thank you. Okay, Galatians 2 and 16. I'll give a stab at it. He asked for it to be explained. And so, if it isn't explained according to what he believes, he can call right back whoever the person was. We would prefer for you to stay on the line. No. Galatians 2 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now, God is the one that brought forth all the three dispensations, Adam to Moses, Moses to Christ, and Christ until the end. And so justification was never achieved by the works of the law. Let us let the writer Paul explain. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, it is therefore Christ the minister of sin. God forbid. What is this actual conversation about? Let's go get a little more meat before we uh, run out of our time. This is about Paul the Apostle rebuking Peter the Apostle for turning back unto the law of Moses to justify the souls of men, and that is not scriptural. Peter wants a Gentile to first become a Jewish proselyte and then introduce Christianity and then baptize him and or simply baptize him later. So let's see what Paul picks up, verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Verse 12. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, not proselytes, Gentiles. But when they were come, this is the people from James, uh, was a, is a very important minister in the Lord's work, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. The fear of James is authority and power and presence just from people sent from him stirred up Peter's spirit to leave. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him. Dissemble means a false love. We don't have love with dissimulation. They dissemble the relationship. Notice what he's going to use the word dissimulation. Watch what he calls. And so much that Barnabas was carried away with their dissimulation, which deals with a false love, a love that is not genuine. Verse 14. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. This is where we want our cause to know. How are they walking not a right according to the truth of the gospel? It is because they are not accepting the gospel's movement that we can eat with idolaters, Hindus, Buddhists, 
We can eat with those that worship rocks and Satan himself. We can eat with those that worship Satan himself. Sit down and eat dinner near them and by them. And it is not a sin. Whereas in the law, it is required that one withdraw himself from such who walk ungodly. Peter is trying to bring back up the positioning of the law of Moses that you can't even eat with the Gentiles. Now, we know that's not going to be done. Now, let's look at what he said. I said to Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why confessest thou the Gentiles and liveth through the Jews? We who are Jews by nature are and sinners, not sinners of the Gentiles. He says, we who are Jews by nature. You're born into Judaism at this time. You're taught nothing but Judaism, the righteousness of God. He says, if you believe that is the walk of the Jew, then why are you living as a hypocrite? Because what's the hypocrisy? He's trying to work from Christianity, holding on to this part of the law. That makes him a Jewish hypocrite, as a Christian even. So he says, verse number 16, which is what I call it required. Now we're up to snuff, all on the same page. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. That was a work of the law, to not be we, we Gentile. But by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Jesus, of faith of Christ, forgive me, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Watch what he says. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are found sinners. That's what Peter was behaving as, not walking according to the gospel. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. What did he destroy? His justification by Mosaic law. Paul destroyed that and became a Christian. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, verse 19, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. If righteous come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So, brother, from how many of friends, brother, here did a wonderful job teaching a uh, lesson concerning about show us the Father, the first segment, not the second one. And they, the second one was good, too, but the first one made a comment. One of the things that Richard Barclay teaches is tithes and offering. Brother Frears was pointing it out. A caller asks, why are we speaking against Richard? And Richard teaches Mosaical law. He wants to be like Peter, holding on to Christianity and some of the Mosaical law, which you cannot be justified by. And this is something that you're going to have to accept, audience. You cannot hold on to some of the portions of the law and then incorporate them into Christianity because Christ is the end of the law. Let me read that. For you, Romans chapter 10, if you will be so kind, and let us look and understand what the writer is saying. Romans 10 and verse number 1. Brethren, my heart desired prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. So that means Israel is lost. For I bear the record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Now see, that's what Peter was traveling to backwards. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness... And going about to establish their own righteousness, our brother Peter tried it, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law. That's final. For righteousness to everyone that believe it. So you cannot be considered righteous. You cannot be considered justified by God trying to incorporate certain portions of the law of Moses. One final thought, 1 Corinthians chapter number 5. Paul is going to validate we must eat with unbelievers. He said we must. It is like it's imperative. Are you going to, unless you're going to go live on Mars or something. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and he says uh, in verse uh, number 9, I wrote unto you, 1 Corinthians 5, 9, I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to keep coming fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortionists, for or with idolaters, for we then must, you needs go out of the world, you'd have to leave the world, so the saint is going, that's why Peter missed it, be eating with, with all types of drug dealers, anybody that does a sin, prostitutes may not know that they're doing that action, but they're there, and if you know of them, you still sit down and eat, but he says, but now I've written unto you to not keep company, watch who we don't eat with, wow, if any man that is called a brother, be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner, 
with such an one know not to eat. But what have I to do to judge them also that are without, meaning outside the church of Christ? Do you not judge them that are within? See, we judge the ones that are in the church of Christ, saying you're righteous. But them that are without God, does therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. So this guy was sleeping with his father's wife. He's in the church of Christ. We put him away. Another person sleeping with his father's wife. We're not in approval, but we've got to get him baptized. For we have to eat next to him. You may think this is odd, but this is the way of God. So that's why you hear us mention an Orpheus Hayward, a Richard Barclay, a Timothy Daniels, Church of Christ gospel preachers who have erred in their walk as Peter. Did you notice Peter did not get a letter from Paul? Nor any type of private meeting before he openly and publicly discussed the subject before others. We don't have to call Richard Barclay or if it's say with our Timothy Downs to ask any permission to speak against the doctrine that's not going to only kill the saints soul, but the souls of the precious men and women who are not members of the church listening to their nonsense teaching that their same pastors teach erroneously every first day of the week. So we want to encourage you to understand that and to embrace that in your heart. And we got to help you in that area. We want to encourage us, our time is almost expired, to remember, you hear the gospel, believe it, desire to change, confess Jesus, Son of God, and be baptized in water, yes, in water, to have your sins removed by the Holy Spirit, by Jesus Christ, by the Father, they all work together, have the Holy Spirit poured into you, and you're added to the Lord's church, the church of Christ, whereby you will be saved, little faithfully, Revelation 2.10, until the end, and God will rescue that soul on the day of judgment. And we encourage you to do so and we encourage you and praise God, uh, the brothers and the service they've done. We the faithful sons of God, Romans 16, 16, the church of Christ salute you. Good job, Eric. God bless you. Brother. That was that was a good that was a good question though. Yeah, that asked yeah, that, that question, question to be for that scripture question. to be explained yeah. because uh, it is kind of deceiving if the person doesn't know yeah. about Christ. So you because, gave a great example of a subject. Read your answer. See, that's yeah. how you do it. Amen. You ask a question, and then you brought it to the scriptures where the scriptures couldn't be broken. You used Galatians, went to Romans, yeah. you know, uh, and the scriptures weren't broken. They weren't to, broken. To, to answer his question. Exactly. This is how yeah. we answer, answer the questions, you Praise know, God. using the oracles of God. God Amen. bless you, brother. But I learned that from y'all and other saints. Believe me, but there was a time I was a scripture breaker. So yeah. <laughs> We've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> God. Praise yeah. his name. Great work. That's a good program, man. 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 I just wish we could get the other brothers to get on board with the program and yeah. do the same thing. But we'll let the Lord judge that.